Good morning. You are here with Philip Taphouse, Business Solutions Consultant, and Rebecca Payne, Business Controller at Scania Australia. We are discussing Scania's recent implementation of our Infor-BI performance management solution. We are going to see how Scania tackled the challenges of strategic planning and finance. Scania reviewed the technology options on the market and chose a performance management solution from Professional Advantage. The solution was implemented in September and completed in two months. Since then, Rebecca has added significantly to the solution herself. What you will get out of this session is a clear understanding of how you can use technology to become strategic finance professionals. You will see the impact on your organisation and on your role of implementing a highly flexible platform solution. You will also see how you can implement business plans that connect finance and strategy and connect financial and operational perspectives. So this is the question we are posing for this session. We believe the answer is emphatically yes. Many of you are finance professionals. Increasingly we are finding chief operation officers and general managers also take a keen and active interest in this. They are keen to understand the impact of their operational plans and the financial incomes. We are finding finance is increasingly at the centre of change. They are becoming a business partner to organisation rather than number crunches. So let's look at what strategic planning is. So strategic planning is about implementing business plans. It's how am I going to get from where I am now to where I want to be at the end of the year or in five years time. Budgeting therefore is not just simply taking last year's numbers and adding 3% or something equally blunt. It involves collaborating on strategic plans such as marketing sales, capital expenditure plans and cost planning but also we need to execute and monitor this plan. A geo system like is just not going to work in this scenario. So what is getting in the way for a truly integrated approach to business planning? As we see here, data in the general ledger or ARP is summarized and is a result of interfaces that summarizes into the general ledger it comes from multiple places and so we lose access to the drivers in the business so we need a common single source of truth which every department has access to and common structures and security without this we are unable to do these processes like planning business intelligence and budgeting and forecasting in a proper integrated way so let's look at the technology architecture that is going to achieve this. So just from a technical level so we can understand the style of this architecture if we start from the bottom here we have our source systems of actual data where actual results are, are coming in and what we are doing is we're going to connect to the finance, the payroll systems and CRMs and so on and bring it into a special in-memory database which is multi-dimensional. This is not just a dump of data into a database. This database here is optimized for budgeting, reporting, key performance indicators and, and analytics. Above this we have a highly flexible intuitive web-based interface. This web-based front end allows extremely flexible screens and, and planning applications to be created. We can build highly intuitive guided applications for users to interact and carry out tasks and inquiries. You also see how we have a dashboard layer and this can be immediately deployed into tablets. We also have an Excel front end where power users can rapidly create um, extremely complex reports. So let's look at how Excel in typically handles this scenario. I know many of you understand the limitations of Excel, but is it really understood the cost of the business of using Excel in this way for our performance management needs? As well as the above issues here that we know about, let's look at how this works and operates from a perspective of a business user. In a typical budget process, uh, finance extract the data into spreadsheets and manipulate them into templates for business users. 
this immediately creates a disconnect once we send this this out the business users will have their own working papers their own, own assumptions and drivers and will ultimately um, put the results of these into the numbers which goes back to finance so there is no line of sight from um, the numbers the dollar numbers we're getting in our finance systems to actually how the assumptions and how something is derived so is, is that a way of getting operationally and strategically aligned and does it enthuse business managers to really collaborate and be involved and be accountable let's look at Scania's operation before we then move on to question Rebecca so in a snapshot Scania Australia is very typical of many organizations whatever industry they operate in a multi-dimensional environment as we see here they have multiple locations where we have workshops which require labor and part sales and calculations that are derived and there's a, a roll, roll up and a roll across of, of various different dimensions such as the states there's national departments for sales and of course in many different types of employees we have so before we go and talk to Rebecca let's just quickly run through what they were looking for one of the key areas is, is visibility and transparency you know, to be able to see across the impact of, of things which are happening out in the business and getting a link between both financial and operational perspectives. Also, we also want to have daily performance management. It's not just something that we want to look at once a quarter or once a month. This is really a day-to-day -day tool where I can use it to have a look at figures from the day before. We can then collaborate between managers. And we also wanted technology which enables change. We, we, we don't want to be managing the technology itself. Okay, so I'm delighted to, uh, to bring Rebecca here. So good morning, Rebecca. Good morning, Philip. Thank you so much for joining us. Not a problem. Um, now, we've done this uh, a couple of times in a couple of different states, and so thank you again for, for joining us. So, okay. But it's been a, a, the reason we're doing this webinar is because we have had some great uh, feedback. Uh, it's been so useful for, for companies who are thinking about making changes to hear it from someone else's perspective that's done it. So um, just to provide a bit of information, um, the role that you have is called a, a business controller. Can you... Tell us a little bit about this role and your title. <laughs> so um, it's a, a mixture of roles. It's a financial as well as um, commercial and uh, working with the branches and the operational staff as well. So working between myself and the branch and then also between uh, the dealer support centre and the finance departments to make sure that that information gets through correctly um, and is communicated well. So it's making sure that they're working uh, okay. the way that we need them to. So you're very much a business partner. Yeah, absolutely. You're not just yes. there crunching the numbers. No, so. um, if they call me finance, I get upset with them. <laughs> so it's um, definitely focused on the commercial and then the strategy of the business and where they want to be I'd in six months, 12 months' time. I'd like to touch on that. I think you just touched on the word there, strategy, because mm -hmm. I really wanted to make this about um, finance becoming more strategic in their role. Can you talk to us what you think strategic planning is and how important that is to finance? So we can all do numbers and budgets and everything else and ultimately if um, we don't have a plan on how we're going to achieve those numbers, it's never going to occur. Um, so it's working with each of the state managers and then also their respective um, reports for parts and service and new trucks on what they want to achieve and how they're actually going to achieve it. So it gives them the tools to know um, financially and also in their view, so from a new truck's perspective on sales, that they'll be able to understand it from that point of view as well. And, and without a planning tool, uh, how would that, what would happen instead if you didn't have that kind of platform? Um, if we don't have that platform, we don't do anything. Um, it's sort of six months or 12 months down the track before you realise you're not achieving your market plan. Um, whereas this, we not only review it monthly, they can review it at any point in time. Great, thank you. That sounds like a fantastic situation for a finance person to be at that level. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. All right, I just want to touch in on the pre existing situation mm -hmm. before, like we just said there, um, just to get your, a sense of the gap that before and after. Um, but first of all, to do a project like this, you, know, you might have thought, oh, I want to do something, but you need a business case. 
and, and you know you might be suffering pain. Um, but can you tell us how easy and how, or hard that was, and you know what what issues you came up against? Um, the issues are um, one proving that it can be the time saver that you believe the system can be. Um, we obviously use Excel previously um, and rely on that information a lot. Being able to prove to them the fact that we couldn't do what we wanted to do in Excel was quite easy, but proving the improvement was something that we um, struggled with. But then once we were able to calculate and see how the system worked and that it was going to work for us, we were able to quantify that for them. Um, not only in uh, equivalence or uh, cost as well, but in the benefit of turnaround time for uh, management reports, board meetings. They can have that information at the touch of a button um, and then they don't have to wait days for us to go and make changes to things. Okay, so you can have qu quantitative and, and, well, qualitative, I suppose, yep. measures. Yep, absolutely. Great. Okay, thank you. Uh, and um, how did your existing IT systems hold you back? I mean, you had a perfectly good ERP and a good Yeah, we have um, seven to ten different systems right. that um, information actually comes from multiple of different mm -hmm. locations. Um, and the current systems, uh, as they're generated from Sweden in Maine, um, but are transported over the world, um, they're not very specific to our requirements. So as much as they're individual, um, they do have the limitations of requiring that a huge extended amount of spend to be able to get any changes in that system. So you sort of got it the way it is and that's how it is. I see, to develop that to something else would be a, a big Absolutely, task. Absolutely, and a right. huge task. Okay. Yep. <laughs> All right. um, so there's next thing then you, you, you come up against, you, you go and look at what's on the market, look mm -hmm. at the te type of technology. Now, um, how can you prove for yourself and others that a system is going to be flexible and, and suitable because uh, we, we often, and you did in our case, do a proof of concept, taking some of your data and building a, a model to feedback. You know, how important is that process? To us, knowing that the system's actually going to do what everyone's promising it's doing is the one thing that can differentiate it when we present the business case. So being able to um, ask questions and uh, get an, a sample of your own information and the most difficult part of the spreadsheet we picked um, to be proven. And then um, we also asked questions of Nick at the time and he was able to show us how easily we could do it rather than... Um, saying that we could do it and then looking at it later. So another um, provider refused pretty much flat out for three meetings to actually show and demonstrate how we could use it ourselves. And I believe that's because of the difficult... Difficulty, yeah, the flexibility. Mm -hmm. that, that's a great, great story. All right, so what we'll move on then is that we've looked at your pre-existing situation, how you evaluated, and then eventually you chose see our solution because of its flexibility. But then there's an implementation process. It, yep. it, there is a, a period of time where it has to be built and delivered and, and, and made right for you. So what, what areas of scope did, did you tackle? You know, what type of models did you tackle? And how long did it take to, to So complete? the first one that we tackled mm. is the budgeting. That was our main mm. focus to get that into a system rather than Excel. Um, and so it's a little bit more reliable and we could trust what we're putting in there. Um, so that took us about two to three months to be completely active and live and we used it for last year's market planning. Um, so there was obviously a very big curve um, in learning there, um, but it, we were able to use it for that year of planning. So it was, yeah, two to three months. Um, and I worked on it with another colleague maybe one to two days a week during that period of time. We were able to do our own work. Right. as well as doing that. Oh, so you didn't have to literally get full-time focused on this? No. Okay. Uh, now, during the imp implementation, we do quite an agile approach um, where we are constantly getting your feedback and we do these, these show-and-tell sessions. Can you tell, did that, was that useful or helpful? Yeah, so the progress mm -hmm. update um, allowed us to identify when we may not have communicated um, exactly what we wanted or how we wanted it and it was easily identified and then corrected straight away rather than two, three weeks in we've built this program, this is what it looks like, this is how it is and oh no, actually we've <laughs> got to make that change here. Yep. Um, and also our business is very fluid with right. the changes so they'll turn around and say, Beck, we want to show it this way instead of that and yep. this is the change we need to make so that was very handy. Okay, so that flexibility really mm -hmm. come, coming in again there. Okay, so we, we implement the system, it's delivered, and then you, eventually you start using it, of course. Yes. Um, now, we often say that this type of technology is, is a journey, not a destination. Yep. Has that been your experience? Absolutely. I'm still to this day looking at the things that it can do for me in future um, and proving that with the um, work and the time savings that we've got just from the budgeting, what we can actually do with this system 
um, linking all of our other data sources as well to it. Yeah. Um, and then sort of, I suppose, uh, I don't want it just to be the reporting for the budget or monthly or daily reporting. I want it to have, you know, the graphs with the dashboard and um, all those type of things set up so that each manager can access it at any point in time. I believe you've only just almost like within the last uh, couple of days um, brought in your time, your hours as well. So yes, as a, as a, so we had some information that wasn't yeah. coming through from our current system, mm -hmm. so we've been able to build that, and that was about a half an hour with Nick um, to right. an hour working out what I had and what we needed, and then that's in the system now, so we're able to show that information straight away. So you can you can actually uh, target and compare budgeted hours against what yeah, actually... Yeah, and so that for me works mm -hmm. the information at that point yes. until I can get um, my auto master, which is my other system, possibly right. integrated into there. That's the stage <laughs> that's two the of <laughs> with the boss, yes. That's great. It's, it's good that you can just progressively, you know, mm -hmm. get, get there. Um, and one of the big issues with this with this type of technology can can be complexity. There are some quite complex solutions mm -hmm. out there which require a lot of IT intensive and having to go to IT. Um, what's been your experience you know, in, in, that, in that area? So I do have a little bit of knowledge of IT and systems previously in my other roles that I've performed. Um, but understanding of Infor is generally just um, changing your brain from the Excel version. Um, to understand, you know, you changes in your formulas and different things like that, and that's really the only IT knowledge I believe that I need to be right. able to do that. Um, obviously, it's taken me a little time to learn and work with the system um, so that I understand it, um, but it's not difficult to do that. So it's stage by stage that you work out, and once you've seen it, you can then replicate that. And um, creating reports and uh, management uh, tools is very easy, and I don't require IT to Great. assist with that. I'm Fantastic, and I think I saw some of you, what you created, uh, the, uh, Nick showed me, and there's a whole bunch of reports. Yes, so, no, <laughs> there's great. a lot of reporting there and they want more, so right. it can do all of that. Okay, um, now I, I believe this implementation has caught the attention not outside of Australia. Um, could you tell us a little bit what, what yep, that is? Yeah, so um, Southeast Asia, I have also inquired in um, the details with them and then I'm working with them at the moment of the opportunity to take that up. Um, and they want to use it for the exact same reason, and rather than spearheading something, they wanted to get um, an item that they believe could apply to them as well. Um, and also Sweden has given me a couple of phone calls in regards to what we're doing and how we're doing it, um, and whether or not it could be adapted to their market as well, which I don't see an issue with at all. So, Great. Yeah, we're Sweden. progressing well there. Sweden, maybe IKEA next. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. Um, and also, like we we want to know, and we like to know what lessons you learn because these sort of implementations that they're never just a cookie cutter. What what have you learned from from the way, or you know, you may have done differently so that someone else perhaps can learn. Um, the initial training, we said we wanted all three days up front before mm. we'd implemented it, um, and I would definitely split that over the period of time. Once you start using the system, it is a lot easier to understand the training that's provided. Um, and your skill set to apply to your own situation. Um, and then also, I suppose, uh, taking that little bit of extra time on looking at what we could do in one go rather than going, OK, get the budget in, that's what we want, this is what we do. So even if we tacked another month on there where we looked at the structure of what we were putting in there, it wouldn't make it simpler for me in this instance now because okay. I'm changing a few things. Yes. But not hard to do, but yeah, would have been better in better the first instance, yes. OK, no, that's great, great, great feedback. Um, now, this all sounds hugely impressive and great. Um, sounds very expensive. Um, could you give us an indication of, of how much the whole kind of solution cost you? Um, so the solution, um, a, including the one-off licences for the first year, um, would be about approximately a full-time equivalent finance professional. Um, and so we have had those savings, uh, so they're pretty much cost neutral at the moment. Um, we've had that additional staff member. Is that an FTE in one year or per for year? For one year. For one year. So for great. one year. So we're looking at a one FTE for one year for the initial cost to get yep. you. Great. Okay. So um, now um, there, are, there are lots of ways. We, we probably did quite a lot in yours. Um, you know, some people can start from a, a, a lower base, mm -hmm. but, but that, that's great. Okay. Well, that, that is a fantastic um, story there, Rebecca. Is there... Um, is there any, anything else you want to add on that there? That, uh... Uh, no, I just think the, the ease with which I could use the program um, yeah. also surprised me when I was doing it. Um, you, you work in stages and you get shown 
how it can be used and everything else yes. like that. And you sort of go, oh, yeah, okay, I'll believe it when I see it. Um, but I have got those benefits and that time saving from there. So I've been able to um, develop with a, a more advanced level of where more. we were aiming for. Okay. Yep. And was there um, any, anything that unexpected that you benefit that you got? So initially you come out with this, we want to do this and this, and then suddenly you think, oh, um, I can do this as well. Well, with the opportunity to be able to map in other uh, systems as much as it was discussed at the start to yeah. be able to see that happen mm. um, and then also the usability to be able to pass it on to uh, my branch managers as well to access and see this uh, this information um, and it keeps them uh, managing their own numbers rather than it being a finance operation. Right. So it's so a very much strategic benefit. Absolutely. The saying, operational yeah. staff are who make it happen. Yes. Um, so if they don't understand and are not involved in it, they're going to say it's a finance problem. Yes. So, yep. yes, and we don't want that. No, absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that, um, thank you, Rebecca. What, what we're going to do is um, um, shortly we'll be doing some Q&A because we found that there were so many questions for Rebecca when we, when we did these. Um, if we just move on to where are they now, um, just so we have that. So as we just summarised here, uh, centralised business drivers, um, so you can share, update and collaborate on data. Less finance, more operations driven, which is, which is a good thing with the opportunity to really slice and dice data through uh, and pick up variances and causes of variances. Now, these are, it gives you some of the time savings that, that was achieved. Um, and as you see, there's things which really, to creating management reports, have gone from literally days and days and days to, to, to minutes. And that, that is just a typical, not an unusual scenario at all. Just remember, it is this, one step at a time, it's, it's a journey, just as, as Rebecca has, has, has highlighted here. Okay, so um, before we go into the questions for Rebecca, one of the things that Scania took advantage of was the ability to do a proof of concept before they chose, just to evaluate. And this is one thing, that at the end of this webinar, if, if this is something you would think would be useful for you, um, we, we can actually take some of your model and some of your data and, and really get a, a perspective of of you know how how we how how it would look for you. Okay, so we've got a questions from from David. Thank you. Um, so I think this is for you, Rebecca. <laughs> um, how do you do the business planning? Um, so I'm I'm gathering. I'll make the assumption that um, we do um, business planning for up to twenty years, but we focus on the financials for one to three years, out to the fifth year as well. Um, so we do have that option. We build. The current year in monthly, um, the second in quarterly, and then in annual for the remainder of the years. So that can be changed at any time for any way. So, so that that does that mean you've got quite a few different interfaces there to get your you know if I have an entry screen for year one, which is in months and in two, does that? No, it's all in the one screen, so it's all, all combined right. in the one um, area, so that they just flow on with that data, and we can also add 2014 for that. Um, and we actually go out to the operational staff as well and have meetings to discuss what they want to put in there so they can actually enter the information straight in Great. as well. Thank you. Um, now, next question is, is it a template that divisions complete or is, is it free-flowing? Like, and is so a strategy on a page, question mark? Um, so we do have um, items that they separate their strategy onto. Um, and put that separate, uh, but we do have um, all of the information flowing from one point into another, so if we wanted to see what the whole of Scania was doing at any point in time, we can pull that out, um, and it pulls into the report for the, uh, the total, whereas the branches can um, enter information at their level and see reports at their level as well. So it, whatever report or level we want to look at, we've got access to that. But the data flows from one point, all into that. Right, yep. great. So, you can really so it's not 15 different screens or things like that that they have to enter in um, for one division. Fantastic, thank you. Um, next question is, how do you link the numbers to the strategy? Partly, I think you may have touched on that. Um, well, they've got to know how they're going to be able to achieve it. So we can put in um, their previous year's information, see how they're tracking now. Um, and with this, we can actually have actuals right up to the previous month so that we don't have to worry about um, a flow and effect of that. And that's automatically updatable. So when we update that, we have a look at the two together and then make sure that their actions are actually um, showing up in their results. A lot of ours are efficiencies and time costings. Um, so being able to show where they're going to do that improvement and how is how we actually put the numbers in. Great. So it's great that you've focused on on how you're going to get from here, here to there, as we're saying, yes. and not just some sort of 
Same, same they could say 5,000 hours, but if they're not producing that or they don't have a plan of attack, they yes. can't achieve that. Yes, they can say something, but if they don't show how that's going to be achieved, then, yes. then you can't measure or monitor yeah, either. Correct. Great. Uh, and next question here is, how do you consolidate up? Um, so we do have eliminations as well because um, we have internal transfers and information. Uh, so we start at the branch level and we mm -hmm. have all the different divisions, parts, service um, and new trucks and then that all combines up together. Um, so it's based on our actual structure for Scania. We set that up um, how we wanted to see it because it was a blank page to start with. So um, how we structure our business and everything else, it flows exactly that so way. It just flows naturally up. In, yep. in, in the product. Yeah, and okay. combines up. And so then at different levels, you add yep. in different products as well that may not be at the branch level. So we've got multitude of levels there. Okay. Quite complexity then that you can build in Absolutely. There. <laughs> um, how often do you transfer the data? How, how live is it? Okay. So now currently I wait for my month end to be finished and then we upload that data into the system. However, I've been doing that a little bit more regularly at the moment while I'm looking at the data. So it's more what type of information we have. We have a general ledger at the moment feeding into Info, um, so that's only finished at a certain point in time. However, with the auto master data, once we yep. get that in, that'll yep. be live and um, a daily, if not, I believe it can go to hourly yes. or whatever. Yep. <laughs> whatever <you want. laughs> so um, it can be updated that yes. quickly. Yes, um, and we've got a um, question here. How many dashboards does a typical branch state manager see? Are there more than one home dashboard? Um, you can create one which actually has a multitude of different graphs and areas that can be put together. So you can have five or six different areas. Um, with the branch managers, they can also then create their own reports should they want to see just the workshop or if they want to see workshop and parts or any area really in there. So they can have a multitude of them yeah. um, and I can set up ones that are monthly reporting or daily and so then they can access it just from a drop down menu. So, so you can create some for them or they can set up their own ones and yes. choose, choose themselves and they can have as many as they like. Yeah, and so if they the wanted to show something person. to the staff separate to what yep. we prepare, they can set their own up as well. So they could be focusing on hours in one particular month or invoicing in another and they can just change that as they need. Great, that's terrific. Mm -hmm. Well, we've just run out of time there. That's another, thank you so much, Rebecca. It's a terrific session to put you under such a pressure again. <laughs> Not a problem. Um, now, contacts and... Um, um, if you want to contact us on, on any of these, um, please, you've got some numbers up here, um, our email address, uh, our web page. If you want to discover a little bit more about some of the stories, we're very active in this area of performance management. Um, so I think that we just <coughs> run out of time. So I, once more, I'd just like to thank everybody. And just to remind you again, there is a recording of this. And if you do have any more comments, please send them in and we'll res respond to you. And if you do want to take advantage of that proof of concept that we discussed, or you want to just uh, try and understand this, this whole solution and what it could mean for you, please do get in touch with us. Thank you so much and uh, goodbye. <laughs>